Welcome to Scanner School so Session 163. This is Ask Scanner School Volume 29. This is where I answer your questions. Before we start this week's podcast, I'd like to take a moment to thank our Patreon supporters. Patreon is a month-to-month sponsorship platform. We have three different support tiers, each with different benefits. But the most valuable tier is our $5 a month tier. This equates to sponsoring the podcast for about a dollar per episode. Now, not only do our $5 Patreon supporters receive the podcast early, but they also receive a commercial-free version of the podcast delivered directly to their podcast player. Some may say that the included squelchy sticker pack that is mailed to your home is the best benefit of the $5 level, but I think it's the community or the club that is growing at this level. You see, we meet once a month on Zoom, and we have a roundtable discussion about scanning, ask questions, offer advice. Some of the members are answering other people's questions, and we just talk with our fellow scanner school classmates. This is an exclusive group for our $5 Patreon members. Now, again, if all this wasn't enough at that level, you'll also receive discounts to upcoming Scanner School courses and offerings. Now, you can help support Scanner School by going to www.scannerschool.com slash Patreon or www.scannerschool.com slash support. Now, I'd like to thank all of our Patreon supporters at all levels, and they are Blurpy Better, Brian King, Buzz Gold, Chris Paris, Craig Harper, Dan, Ed Walsh, Eddie Kay, Edward Bramlett, Glenn Bryden, Guy Lee, James Felling, James Peruda, Jeff Block, Jenny Taylor, Jim Heinrich, John Goldenberg, Ken Newberry, Kenneth Fowler, Kevin Zwicky, Lenny Bauer, Les Stevenson, Mark Beebe, Michael Kroger, Paul Teal, Raymond Hill, Richard Armstrong, Robert, Robert Kassler, Ronnie Bach, Sal Marandola, Tim Mazza, Todd Glendie, and William Arcan. Now let's start the podcast. Welcome to the Scanner School a podcast dedicated to the scanner radio hobby. Class is about to begin. Here is your host, Phil Lichtenberger. Welcome to Scanner School. My name is Phil Lichtenberger, and my amateur radio call sign is W2LIE. Now, today's podcast is sponsored by our brand new training course, The Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Software-Defined Radios. Everything to know to get started in SDRs in an afternoon. Now, you've heard me talk about this training course for the last couple of weeks, right? This simple, free, step-by-step course will teach you how to use your brand new SDR, install the drivers on your computer, and get you listening to your local stations. Now, if this free course doesn't incentivize you to learn more about software defined radios, I have one more way of, one more trick up my sleeve. Our next free webinar. I want to thank everybody who checked out our previous webinar that we held last week, the 2021 Scanner Radio Crash Course. Again, you could check that out on a replay by going to scannerschool.com slash crash course, all one word, by the way. Our next webinar is all about software-defined radios, what you can do with a software-defined radio, the different types of software you can run, and why it is you'd actually want to have a software-defined radio as a part of your scanner radio Swiss Army knife, so to speak. So sign up for the next webinar by going to scannerschool.com slash webinar. That's W-E-B-I-N-A-R. All session notes from today's podcast can be found on scannerschool.com slash session 163. In addition to being sponsored by our latest courses and webinars, Scanner School is sponsored by our Patreon supporters. This podcast wouldn't be here without your support, and I want to thank you again from the bottom of my heart for supporting the podcast. And also by East Coast Pagers, eastcoastpagers.com. So today I'm answering your questions. Many submit questions via our Ask page. Some submit questions via SpeakPipe, and some use our local number, which is 516-308-2885. The best way to answer your question is any way that you are most comfortable with. But again, asking it via SpeakPipe or our local 516 number puts you to the very top of the list, and I will answer your question on the very next Ask Scanner School. Hey, if answering questions on a podcast isn't something you're up to, but you want to still ask a question, join us tonight on YouTube, scannerschool.com slash YouTube, where I'm answering questions again live at 9 p.m. U.S. time. Again, replays are always available on the YouTube channel. And again, if you've got questions that you want answered and you want more of a personal response to them, you can always request me to be your tutor. That's what we're here for. Scannerschool.com slash tutoring or scannerschool.com slash consulting. You can book me for an hour and we'll sit down over Zoom. And it's just like being 
virtually there. I can see your screen. You can see my screen. It's pretty much just like having me sit right next to you, and we can go through whatever it is that you need help with on your scanner radio journey. Again, I love helping people, and this is the best way that I can do so. So our very first question is a call-in from Jim Peruta. Jim has called in questions in the past, and I'm happy to say that Jim automatically by default wins the free tutoring session for this month because nobody else called in and asked a question via SpeakPipe or our voicemail number. And again, you want to win a free tutoring session, scannerschool.com slash ask and click on SpeakPipe or our local number. Again, 516-308-2885 and you'll be in a running for a free tutoring session. So Jim, thanks in advance. I'll reach out to you as far as how to claim your free tutoring session. So let's listen to Jim's question now. Hello, Phil. It's Jim Peruta calling. I've recently purchased a SDS 200 scanner. I already had a SDS 100 scanner. Boy, the 200 is much heavier than the 100. What what am I getting more for my bang for the buck here on the 200 than the 100? What makes it so much heavier? Is there more whiz-bang inside the machine, so to speak? Thanks much. I'll be looking for your answer. Hey, Jim, congratulations on your brand new Uniden SDS-200. It is a beautiful pair, the SDS-100 and the SDS-200. Great radios. And uh, you're right, though. I mean, the SDS-200 is a little bit heavier than the SDS-100. This is nothing new, though. This has been par for the course when it comes to Uniden's handheld radios versus their mobile slash desktop counterparts. The 346 XT or the XTC was much lighter than the BCT 15X. The 325 P2 was much lighter than the 96 P2, 436 lighter than the 536. And of course, like you've noticed, the STS 100 is a lot lighter than the STS 200. Well, why is that? Well, it's all got to do with obviously the internal components and also the external components of the scanner. So one of the few things that makes the SDS-200 different than the SDS-100 is the fact that there is a LAN port in the scanner, right? Well, does a LAN port really add that much extra weight to the scanner? Absolutely not. The screen size is much larger on the SDS-200 than it is on the SDS-100. Does the screen size add that much extra weight? No, not at all. What does add more weight, though? Well, we have a larger speaker inside the SDS-200 than we have on the SDS-100. The SDS-200 comes without a battery. There's no way of plugging a battery into internally. So you do have the SDS-100 with a battery because it's a portable unit. But with that said, the SDS-100 is mostly plastic. Why is it mostly plastic? Well, for the weight. Look at your SDS-200. The SDS-200 has an aluminum enclosure or some sort of metal top and bottom to it, okay? So right there, that's a little bit more than plastic. Take the shielding off, the outside frame of the SDS-100, and you have, again, metal inside, a metal chassis on the SDS-200. You've got a top plate, a bottom plate, and two side rails that everything is mounted to. Yes, the breadboard inside and all the circuitry and everything else is much larger in the SDS-200 than it is on the SDS-100. You would think you'd crack one of these things open. It would just be an SDS-100 mounted in a, a different style board. But no, I mean, it is, but it's not, right? It's, it's much larger on the inside as far as what they put in there. So with all of that, it has a little more weight. But it's really got to do with the metal that's built, uh, that the whole unit is built around, Okay. I can't prove it, but I'm assuming there's a little bit better shielding in the SDS-200 than there is in the SDS-100 because you've got more real estate in there for that kind of design. Whereas the SDS-100 is built for portable operations, of course, you're going to have some sacrifice when it comes to size over right everything else. So the very short story behind this is that there's just more metal in the design of the SDS-200. Now, again, that extra weight also makes that scanner a little bit more stable on your desk because as you push on buttons, right, you don't want the radio sliding across your uh, your shelf or your desk or wherever it is you may have it mounted to, okay? So just by having that little bit of extra weight on there certainly does keep the radio 
from moving or sliding across things as well. Again, would you want a radio, the weight of an SDS-200 pulling on your belt all day long either? I mean, you would need suspenders. <laughs> so not to insult your question, Jim, there, but I'm just thinking of somebody trying to wear an SDS-200. And uh, I don't know, most of the guys I see around a ham, uh, a hamvention or a um, one of the uh, before before the coronavirus basically canceled everything, a lot of these guys probably would be wearing suspenders on their size 50 jeans and, <laughs> and an STS-200 would look like an STS-100 on most people's frames. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at a way of, of bringing some uh, entertainment into the podcast, probably at some phantom person's expense, but, um, but you get the point here, right? There's there's just more metal involved with the design of the SDS-200. And I again, I would assume it's got to do with a little bit better shielding and stuff like that. But again, side by side, as far as what you could do with the radio, besides the screen differences, there's extra ports again on the SDS-200 that don't exist on the SDS-100. And other than that, you know, it's the same radio, minus the fact you've got a barrier one and a Wi-Fi, I mean, a LAN connector on the other. I don't know. I own them both. I'm happy with them both. Yeah, one does weigh more than the other, but again, for the sake of repeating myself, it's all got to come down to the metal. But Jim, I want to thank you very much for asking your question. Again, you're the winner for the month, so I'm not going to make you wait to the end of the podcast to see if uh, anybody who's won the free tutoring session, <laughs> being that you're the only person who asked, by default, congratulations. Now, again, if anybody wants to ask a question on the podcast, you can do so by going to scannerschool.com slash ask. And again, if you use the speak pipe link, like what Jim did, or you use our local number, 516-308-2885, it puts you in the running of a free tutoring session. So again, Jim, thank you again so much for your continued support. Really do love having you as an active member of the community, and thanks again for asking your question. Okay, let's go over to one more. We got another one over from Roger, who I believe is from the UK. Okay, so Roger's asking, I just purchased a new BCD 3600 XLT with the NXDN, but need to know which product is compatible with it to facilitate location-based scanning via GPS. Is the BCS GPS compatible or can you recommend another device? Cheers. So again, I am assuming Roger is over in the UK just based on the model number that he's talking about here, which is the BC 3600 XLT. Now, just for... Um, so that we have a little bit of reference here yet, the UBC D436P2 would also be the Australian version. So again, the 436 HP has a couple of cousins depending on where you are listening from. And this is a really great question. So yeah, I, I don't have access though to the, the 3600 XLT, Roger, but it does look like you are correct, right? The the BC SGPS, which is the Universal Receiver Modulator Kit, or they call it the uh, Simple Solution GPS, which replaces the BC GPSK, thankfully, is, is Uniden's Universal GPS Kit for the American versions of the scanner. So for the 436 HP, you would need the BC SGPS. Now, I am going to assume, and you know what they say when you assume something, but I have no other way of figuring this one out. I would assume that this would also work on your European scanner, the 3600. Board rate probably would be the same, and it's GPS, so the language is the same. I don't see why it wouldn't work unless there's something specific to the European version that makes it use a different version of geolocating itself. Let's put it that way. Because there are other versions out there of geolocating besides just the US GPS. A little story here. I do work for a US mobile communications carrier. And when we took delivery of some equipment, the GPS wasn't something they had used because it was a... Um, an American product, but it's supposed to be a global type of hardware. And they didn't want to limit themselves to the American style of geolocating yourself. We all know now here in the States that we're using GPS on all this equipment, but still that was just something that you know nobody thought of when the equipment was, or the specifications rather, was created. 
So, so yeah, so there's a little bit of trivia for you as well. But in the end, yes, the BCS GPS is basically a universal GPS kit. It comes with all the cables required to hook it up to any unit in scanner or CB radio, which is great because originally you had to buy the GPS kit, then you had to buy, you had to use the adapter kit that came with the mobile or the, uh, the handheld radio. And it was just a series of cables and zip ties basically and a lot of things that had to go together in order to make things work so to get one kit now that has everything you need whether it be the cables that go into the the 3600 or the 436 the special modular connector that uh, snaps into the back of the bearcat cb radio or the sds 200 right it all comes now in one single kit which is great because again the other the other system was just a mess so I'm, I'm very i'm very happy to see that they have replaced it so with that congratulations on getting your radio and uh, looking at setting up the gps now again when you program the radio though for your nxdn or even anything else for that matter you're going to need to also program in coordinates and also your radius and all that stuff too so make sure that when you download either from radio reference or whatever it is you're putting into your scanner that you have also set up your geo coordinates your fence so to speak so that the scanner knows where and when it should turn on and turn off the certain scan lists that you want to have set up on the gps because again without programming in or knowing the coordinates of whatever it is you're scanning the gps functionality of the scanner is completely useless so again as long as you're all set on having gps coordinates programmed in the in the scanner you can use your gps and you should be off to the races so roger Thanks again for your questions, and hopefully the 3600 works just as uh, the same as the 436 does when it comes to GPS scanning. Thanks again for asking your question. Okay, we're right back after these quick messages. Did you know there are ways to help support the Scanner School podcast that doesn't take any time or any extra money on your part? If you go to scannerschool.com support, you will find we have several ways that you can Continue to do your online shopping and help support us. We have links to Amazon. If you click on our link before you go to Amazon, anything you buy from there will help support Scanner School. Now, if you're in a market for a brand new scanner, an antenna, other accessories, we have links to Scanner Master, where you can not only purchase a scanner and accessories, but you can also get your radio programmed. And by clicking on our link before you buy, you are helping to support the podcast. Now, if you're in a market for software, we have links to Butel. And if you want something new to you, we also have links to eBay. Again, just go to scannerschool.com slash support before you make your purchases, and you are helping to support Scanner School at no additional cost to you. This session of Scanner School is sponsored by East Coast Pagers. Now, East Coast Pagers is one of my online companies, and we are a Unication, Apollo, and Swiss phone dealer serving the North American market. Now, if you're looking for a personal use pager or one for your department, we can get you a quote at the very best prices. So why does a company like East Coast Pagers support Scanner School? I think that every Scanner Radio user should at least put one pager in their collection of radios. The reason why is very simple. It frees up your scanner to just do scanning, and then you have one radio that's dedicated to your local fire activity. Now with a pager, you can have voice storage. You can do tone outs. You can keep it silent. You can go back the next day and listen to what you've missed overnight. It's more than you can do with an out-of-the-box scanner. And with today's pagers having multiple frequencies and even having multiple channels in a scan list, like the Unication G1 can do eight channels in a scan list. It has 64 memory channels, and out of the box it comes with 11 minutes of stored voice and a desktop charger the g2s to g5s they do p25 phase one and phase two in simulcast environments with stored voice paging on conventional np25 oh and they're upgradable too to dmr type one and type two they are more rugged than today's consumer based scanners and with a pager like a Swiss phone S-Quad, you won't even realize you're wearing one. It'll help keep you informed as to what's going on in your neighborhood. So again, eastcoastpagers.com or contact me directly, phil at eastcoastpagers.com. Do you have a new scanner? You're having problems understanding how it works? Maybe you're new to the entire Home Patrol database of programming and you can't figure out Sentinel. 
Did you get a new SDR and you're trying to figure out how to install it or you want to learn how to use Unitrunker, DSD+, maybe set up a Pioware, or even just make some changes and you don't understand how this system and the equipment works? The podcast might be great for you, but maybe you need a little bit more of one-on-one help with setting something up. I'm available to do just that with you with our private tutoring sessions. You can book me online by going to scannerschool.com slash consulting for a one hour session. And it's great because we can actually share computer screens remotely and I can guide you through step by step as if I was sitting right next to you. So again, book me for an hour at scannerschool.com slash consulting for your scanner radio one-on-one tutoring session. National Communications Magazine is your personal library of scanner, CB, GMRS, FRS, MURS, and two-way radio articles written by the best minds in the business over the past three decades. Your Natcom personal online access account allows you to download the newest issues of America's Hobby Radio magazine, as well as back issues too. So visit natcommag.com to download your free sample issues and sign up today. That's natcommag.com for National Communications Magazine. Okay, Chris writes in. He goes, hello, Phil. My name is Chris. I'm a fourth-generation volunteer firefighter in Bergen County, New Jersey. Chris goes on to say that Bergen County Police Department have, in multiple municipalities, are now operating on a new system. So he's looking to get feedback on what scanner will be the best to be able to pick up the new system and try and figure out for him which is the best one that he should pick. So the first thing I did was I jumped on to Radio Reference and went into the database there. So again, you go to Radio Reference, click on Database. I went to New Jersey and I went to Bergen County. So the first thing that I see is a note basically under the law enforcement section of the system. And it says that County Services on the Bergen County Public Safety P25 Digital Trunk System. County Police sheriffs, prosecutors, and hazmat talk groups are all encrypted. Municipal law enforcement talk groups and other county services are all in the clear. Also, the following frequencies, 4772875 and 155.550, are used to patch the trunk system for countywide ops and are used for system backup. So that's a huge red flag for us right then and there. So we know, okay, There's a backup patch on VHF and UHF we can listen to, but that's really not going to help as far as PD. Let's look, though, at fire operations as well. So, again, there is a county VHF dispatch channel, and we're also going to find some fire on the trunk system. With the municipalities, we do have several VHF, FM narrow, and occasional P25 conventional channel as well for you in Bergen County. But again, I want to focus in right on the Bergen County P25 system because this is where we're going to have to spend the money to find a scanner. So the first thing I notice is that it's an APCO P25 Phase 2 system is what it's labeled as, right? It doesn't mean it's a Phase 2 system. It just means that it can have talk groups on here that are Phase 2 type of talk groups, okay? So Just because it says phase two doesn't mean phase two. We got to do a little bit more investigation. The next thing we notice here, though, is that there are three sites, a north simulcast, a south simulcast, and a 700 megahertz simulcast. Well, what does this mean? This means that there's multiple transmitter locations transmitting the exact same thing at the exact same time, and these are networked together in a simulcast site. Site does not mean one transmitter location. Site means networked of transmitter locations transmitting at the same time. Okay, they call that a site. So with that said, now we know we've got a P25 system and we know we've got some cast on here. So already we're putting these in order here. Okay, let's look at some talk groups. System talk groups for countywide law enforcement. We've got encryption on countywide law enforcement one and two. So, okay, it doesn't matter what we get now. It's encrypted. But there are police dispatches one through eight law enforcement ops, and also critical ops, which are not encrypted. So that means we're back in the game here. As you roll through, sheriff's departments are encrypted. We have fire and EMS. Again, they're all P25, not encrypted. So we're good here. 
Okay, so what does it look like we're going to work on here? Well, we know we've got a P25 Phase 2 capable system. We know we have simulcast. Okay, we know we have a little bit of encryption. So if we're interested in just the countywide stuff, we're done here. But we're not. We're interested in more than just the countywide stuff. At least that's what it sounds like that Chris is interested in here. The Tor groups we can monitor, the ones that do not have a capital E next to them in the mode com, only have a D, which stands for digital. This tells us it is a phase one Tor group. If there was a T in the mode, that would be TDMA or a phase two, uh, two mode. So we're going to assume here that we're going to have an issue with simulcast because it's a P25 system with three layers, three sites, all labeled simulcast. Right away, this is putting me into an SDS-100, an SDS-200, or a Unication pager. Okay? Those, those are my three advices right there, the three solutions for you. Now, if you can eliminate the issue of simulcast, okay, you might be able to get with, away with a BCD-325P2 or a BCD-996P2 or maybe even a TRX-1 or a TRX-2. However, my luck with TRX-1s and 2s are, are very slim when it comes to monitoring a P25 simulcast layer, okay? I have better luck with the 325 and the 96 over the TRX ones and TRX2, but again, nothing really is giving me a great solution other than SDS-100, SDS-200, a Unication pager, or even an SDR, okay? So my suggestion, based on what I am looking at on Radio Reference, is... Because of simulcast, if you want something that's handheld, either a fire pager from Unication, again, talk to me because I'm a Unication dealer. You can reach out to me at eastcoastpagers.com or pick up an SDS-100 or SDS-200. Again, you can do so by going to Scanner Master. And again, our affiliate link for Scanner Master is scannerschool.com slash Scanner Master, and they will treat you very well over there. All right? So that is is my recommendation when it comes to Bergen County. Great question, Chris, and thanks again for your service. Okay, our last question of the week comes in from David Stearns. David says, how can I update the firmware and a unit and trunk tracker for BCD996T? Can you provide any suggestions on what I would need to do and maybe any videos are able to watch online? Thanks, David Stearns in Kansas. So, David... You're going to need the data cable that comes with the scanner. That is that uh, proprietary uh, serial cable that comes with the front, that little that little port that plugs in the front of the scanner, and it's got the DB9 cable on the other side. Or you'll need the Uniden USB 1 cable, or you'll need a DB9 connector that goes in the back that plugs into the GPS cable. But again, I think, if memory serves me correctly, you can only do a firmware upgrade off the front port on these scanners. It's been a very long time since I've updated a BCD996T. So there was a piece of software called the Bearcat Version Updater Version 2. And what that required you to do is have a Windows-based computer. You would download the software off the net. Then you would go to the Uniden T-Wiki and you would download the, um, the firmware for your scanner. You'd open up uh, Bearcat version updater version 2. Then you would select the scan file and then you would apply that to your scanner. Well, things have changed and gotten a little bit easier. Now there's Bearcat Uniden version updater or maybe it's, it's BVUP, right? So it's Bearcat version updater version 3. And this requires a Windows-based computer. It requires an internet connection. And it requires that you have your scanner and the serial cable, either the serial cable that comes with it, with the adapter for your computer, or a USB 1 cable. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to Uniden's website, either through myunit.com or do uh, the Uniden T-Wiki, and download Bearcat version updater 3. Once you install and have version 3 up and running, you are going to then launch the software in your Windows-based computer. You are going to select the version or the uh, flavor of scanner you want to update, which in your case is the BCD996T. That will then grab the scan file over the internet, 
And what you'll do is you'll follow the on-screen prompts, which is typically a three-key sequence on your scanner as you turn it on, which will then eliminate the backlight on the screen, but you would have nothing lit up on the screen other than the backlight, so you won't have any display text. And you'll hit OK to go, and it will then push the firmware onto your scanner. So as I'm recording this podcast, it looks like the latest version of the scanner software or the firmware in the scanner is 3.0. 2.00. So if you already have that version of the firmware, then you're already good to go. There's there's really no other advanced uh, options available to you at this time. So again, it looks like that it was last updated on 2012. So it's been a couple of years. But again, download the firmware upgrading tool, and then you just plug in your scanner basically and follow the on-screen prompts. It's actually pretty simple. It takes takes about five minutes to push the firmware over to your scanner. But other than that, that's how it's done. It's not that difficult. And uh, I'm sure there's some videos out there on YouTube that have it. But um, again, it's definitely Melissa list of things to do to get some videos, especially like this on our YouTube channel, which is at scannerschool.com slash YouTube. Another option, too, is if this is a little bit over your head, what you can do is uh, we could do this on a tutoring session. I can uh, take control of your of your scanner and, and 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 do this for you with our tutoring session. Again, scannerschool.com slash tutoring or scannerschool.com slash consulting. And another option, too, is Scanner Master does also have a firmware upgrade service they have as well. So if you want to mail your scanner to them, they can actually do it for you as well. So with that, David, great question. And again, it's a very short answer because it's a it's a very simple solution on order to upgrade the firmware on your scanner. Thanks again so much for asking your question. Okay, so how did we do? All the session notes from today and a space for you to put your feedback is on our website, scannerschool.com slash session 163. Please make sure you subscribe to the podcast. We've got some great podcast sessions coming out, especially regarding SDRs. That's basically our next topic of conversation for the month of February. Next week, we'll do something a little bit different, but after that, we're going to have a great guest in here, and we're going to talk about software-defined radios. Again, check out our brand new webinar and our course. You can go to scannerschool.com slash webinar to sign up for our February webinar, which will all be all about software-defined radios. So with that, Please share the podcast with your friends. This is the best way that you can help us help more people with the podcast. My name is Phil Lichtenberger, and this is Scanner School. We teach you everything you know about the scanner radio hobby. Thanks again. Make sure you submit your questions for next month, please. Scannerschool.com slash ask. And again, we'll talk to you all next week. 73.